Today, we're going to talk about maps. Imagine you need to store a bunch of data, maybe like a list of names, but using an array, which I also have a video on, in this situation, using an array might not be what you actually want. Because there is a bad thing about arrays, well, they can be difficult to work with, because let's create a new array uh, with anything. Axel, uh, I don't know, 19, gonna be 20 soon, damn, you're gonna stop watching a teenager very soon. And some other value, uh, pff, uh, I don't know, I actually don't know, sure, test. To get to those values, you have to use numbers, which are used, uh, which are called indexes. So yeah, it says two, and it's okay since we can see the array here, but what if it was somewhere else? Well, now you don't actually know what you're referring to. What if you wanted to name your values as well? For that, we can use a map. So let's create mappy <coughs> map. Objects have special syntax. So if you want to create an object, you can just wrap it in square brackets. Wait, no, curly brackets, curly braces, sure. And now it's an object and you can make your object there, so on. Unfortunately, maps do not have some special syntax, even though you're actually supposed to use them in most of the situations. <clears throat> Essentially, use objects in situations where you would use a class. So, if the object that you're creating is, well, object-oriented, then yeah, it's an object. But if you just want to store data, definitely use a map. So, a map. We can actually name our data here. So, let's say Alex, and then the second value will be their age. So 38, um, Lyoha. Hold on, how do you spell this in English? Lo, no. Lo, Lyoha, sure. <laughs> uh, and he can only be 15. And then Christina, uh, I don't know, 17. And now, we can refer to those ages by the names. So, Mappy, once again, square brackets, and Leoha. Let's display this in an infos, so we can see what came out of it. 15, great. So now we know what we're referring to. Instead of just using some random index, we specifically mean loha in the situation and get the value that we want. So that's the use essentially when you want to store data and have it be visible and understandable uh, what the key names are. So in an array it's a pair of index to value, in maps it's key to value. I actually started making the difference obvious recently when writing for loops, which is once again in the video on arrays, which I have a link to in the description. So if I'm trying to for loop an array, I do for index value in array. But if I'm doing the same thing for looping a map, I do key value in mapping. The reason why I have such weird naming is because if I don't, I override, or at least attempt to, a class that already exists. That's why I have cute naming for a lot of things, especially when I have small testing. So why are maps useful? I'm going to show off some situations where I use them personally, and the first one is links. So I even have multiple, oh wow, I, I have more than I thought. Um, yeah, I store links in a map. So this thing is just a huge map, which has 
well, the current one has all the links to all of my videos on both this channel and my previous channel, which is now dead, but all still has some useful content. Uh, this even has some of my unlisted videos, and if you're interested, then go ahead to lib-v2 links channel.hk and you'll find yourself in this file. I also leave a link to this file in the description. Uh, anyway, what's happening here is the first thing is the key, so the name of the link, and then the actual link. And that goes on and on and on and on. So every link that I have has its name. So I send links very often. Maybe there is a person on Discord which is asking a question like, uh, huh, I wonder how to, I don't know, use uh, if win active for hotkeys in v2 and I just send them this video. Well, I don't just go to my channel, copy the link and come back. No, I have a map with links and then I can use my runner to paste that link by its name. So an example of how I would be doing that is uh, here I am in insert mode. If you're not a bit user, it doesn't matter. Uh, I open my runner, then P for paste, and then the name of the link. Context sensitive hotkeys. And now I have a link. That's how I send links. Pretty much always. But if I don't remember the name, I just search for it. Uh, oh, here I am, and then I copy it with Vim. So, it's still useful when I do remember some stuff, like the hider. It's very easy to remember because I know specifically what I'm talking about. And by the way, it's about this. Well, that's funny. Right, that's why I had it. Uh, yeah, but initially what this does, it just creates um, a box, a GUI, with a color of your choosing to cover up essentially something that you don't want to see. Uh, if you're interested in learning about how I did that, you can watch the video on that as well. It feels like I'm just promoting myself more than I'm teaching you stuff. Uh, it has some importance, trust me. Uh, so, first of all, great, we now have a way to store stuff uh, and name it as well. Especially for something like links, which I don't really know how to store otherwise. How do you store your links? Do you use like bookmarks or maybe you have just a file where you write down your links? Mm, what do you do? Because I'm privileged with auto hotkey and I've been doing it this way for quite some time. So I'm interested in how uh, people usually handle this. So, aside from just having some data, we can use maps to avoid using the switch statement, which I have a video on, if else, ternary, or basically any branching. Maps allow you to go over that. How? Let's go to my runner, because that's probably the perfect example. So, let's look at runner commands. What is this? It's a map, which has names, and binds, so uh, the values are function objects, ready to execute functions, essentially. I provide them here. The value that ends up being here is the function object, which I can later call. So this, the way this works, oh, and by the way, this map is static. Very important distinction. If the map is not static, you waste time every time by creating it. But if it's static, you only do so the first time you execute the function and then it's it's ready there. It's just in memory, it doesn't have to be re-executed. And it ends up being much, much, much faster than a switch statement, like noticeably. And in programming, when you notice something being faster, you know you've improved something because on average, everything is already way too fast. Well, not way too fast, but very much 
fast enough. So I constantly use static maps of function objects. So uh, this uh, to avoid having to branch. How do we actually use that? Remember the name runner commands. Let's go here, actually. We try to call runner commands, input call. Call actually might not be even needed uh, because, hold on. Yeah, this is essentially this, just brackets. What's happening here? Try is because we can fail and then we catch any, I might go over that as well. Runner commands, so the map that's just above what we're looking at. Input is the actual input that I have here. So we provide this text, which is SDF, A, SDF, S, A. <laughs> we provide that to the map. So essentially tr uh, try to have it as a key. And if that key exists, um, then we get a function object. And when we call a function object, well, we call a function object doing something. And uh, I wonder why, ah, yeah. We don't necessarily need to use the explicit call, I don't think, but I still do. I don't remember why, but I'm not going to check it. Uh, the initial idea is just brackets, the same way you call functions, just brackets. Wow, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, one thing to recognize, this is actually imperfect code, because what we should have been doing instead is if uh, runner commands has, has is a maps method that lets you check whether it has a key uh, with a value. So if has input, then do this. And then you can remove the catch any because we don't try anything. We just don't do anything after we recognize that no, it doesn't have that key. So I'll fix that. I find out that my code is bad in some way, surprisingly often when recording videos. I guess because when you're trying to teach people, uh, you get more criticizive. Sure, I'll just come up with that word uh, of your own code to make sure you're teaching the right thing. So here we used has, and we can go even more complex by this. The input that we once again have uh, can now split into two parts. First, a tag which is in this case is I, and then the actual input, which we'll just call input. That gets split into two. The first, basically the thing before the first space, is the key. The second is the actual input. So in the result array, we have result one, which is the flag. And if this map uh, has that flag, the flag of I, then this uh, function object call with this parameter, that parameter being all the input that you go after the flag. But that's more of the explanation of how the runner works than maps. You can just, uh, it's just a good example as to why maps can be powerful, because this is somewhat complex behavior, yet we don't have to go through every single flag to check out which one is is correct. No, we just uh, do that with the map and in the end it's much faster because a switch statement would be checking every single one of them until it's true. Meaning it's, low, uh, it's O of N. Basically the more flags you have the slower it's going to be. But maps at least in order hotkey, are all of log n, which is logarithmic time. Essentially, it divides by two every single time, which is still bad, actually, for maps, because maps and dictionaries, 
pretty much the same thing usually. In other languages are O of log 1, meaning they are always the same time no matter how much they have. Imagine how amazing that is, right? Well, even O of log n is already incredible and much faster than switches. However, it's probably not a smart idea to go on and use maps always. There are situations where they might be slower. So, wait, is that true? Well, imagine if you have a switch with three possible states, three possible values. One, yeah, one, two, three. Um, so first it goes, one, is it true? No. Is it true? No. Is it true? Yes. Great. Let's do that. A map first divides by two. So now it has two groups, one with one and the second group with two and three. Great. Uh, this doesn't need to be divided anymore because it's only one thing. Is it true? No. Great. Let's divide this group now. Great, it's now in two groups once again. Is this true? No. See how that's a lot more operations? So if there are only a few uh, possible cases in your switch statement or if else, you probably just should use that and not a map. But once it gets to quite a bit more, like 10 I think is already more than enough for a map to be of good use here because pretty sure at 10 a map will be faster especially a static one so do remember to use static maps as with learning anything it's really a good idea to check out the docs for the thing that you're learning uh, so a couple of things that are important is first of all has which we already used there delete is for when to you want to delete a key, a key value pair. Why is this useful? So imagine you have a map, uh, let's call it, I don't know, oh yeah, mappy once again, uh, and you want to delete the key of key. What, did you expect that I was going to be creative? So you do something like this, right? Yeah, but the key still exists. The value is unset, true, but the key pair still exists. So the key value pair, even though there's no value. To actually remove that key, you would need to use delete and then key. Okay. Um, also, we have clear in case you ever want to remove everything from a map, maybe to fill it later again. But how do you fill a map which you already created? Using set. So once again, we have mappy and say it has a couple of stuff. Uh, once again, that example with names and ages. To add more, you can use uh, the set methods of maps. So let's set, it's really hard to came up with names, Lucy. I know why I remember that, because I'm on episode like 730 of One Piece. Um, 730, sure. And boom. The map that, please imagine, has more stuff now has this as well. And that's pretty much it about maps. They are incredibly useful, probably one of the most useful thing in on a hotkey. Or rather, the most useful thing of V2 compared to V1. If we ignore GUIs whatsoever, because GUIs in V1 are just horrifyingly bad, like, oh my god! In V2, they're actually kind of fun to work with. I mean, just look at the amount of GUIs uh, that I have. One, two, then I also have the keyboard uh, SC code getter, then this, then this, uh, I think I have this as well, yeah. What else do I have? I have... Uh, the f file system search. And by the way, I have videos about all of these, right? I don't have a video on that. It's boring. I have videos on these. Uh, I think I have a video on that. I don't remember. I have a video on info. 
Uh, I'm gonna try to leave links to all of that. So, if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comment, maybe have a question or suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags! I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!